What is going on, everybody? It is your boy, your man's Toxic Gamer331, back at it with another video. And today, I have a little something different that um I've never done before. And to uh today, I am going to read a story that I created that's called Wilbur Boy. Uh, so, it is a story about this dog that is, um, a dog that is found in an alleyway that I created, by the way. Wait, did I already say that? Whatever. That is found in an alleyway, and a young boy, Michael, finds him and decides to take him in as one of his own, and it's about their adventures during the 9-11 attacks when uh they join the army and how everything goes and so, so on and so forth uh but don't before i get into the story don't forget to subscribe like the video share the video ring the bell for all, all notifications and feel free to comment on your opinions of the story that i created uh but anyways before we get into it, I gotta take a drink of water because I can't really read out loud that much. Well, not, like, I'm, it makes my tongue super thirsty, so I need to take a big drink of water. <sighs> okay. Alright. Here we go. Have you ever wondered what it's like to lose something that you hold most dear? That's what Michael Dixon had to deal with, but before that, let's go into his early childhood. He had a very ordinary childhood, a great, fam a great family, friends, community, but not a nice neighborhood. On one of his daily bike rides, he found a dark alleyway, which he heard weeping of some sorts, of some sorts. He went in to investigate, and he stumbled upon a man that seemed as if he got knocked out or mugged. But it wasn't any of those things. He had been stabbed and murdered. Uh, but in the dumpster next to the body was where the weeping had been coming from, and he stumbled upon a small, short, little beagle dog that seemed as if he had just witnessed a horrible scene. Uh, Michael witnessed that he had a collar which said the address where he was from and had its name, Wilbur. After Michael had uh, comforted poor- I gotta move this over, hold up, uh, because it's multiple pages. Poor Wilbur, he carried the dog to the address as he thought nobody was there. It seemed as if the person was the only one who lived there, excluding Wilbur, of course. Um, then the young boy took the poor beagle as one of his own. Of course, it was very difficult to bring home. He brought it in to his house and introduced him into, uh, to his mother, Angela. Uh, she asked many questions, for example, where did you find it, what happened to it, so on and so forth. Then came the, the hard part, telling about what was next to Wilbur. What, um, <clears throat> what bad things he must have seen, she said. Then, um, Mike asked, um his mom mother about taking care of the dog which she agreed to as the years went past wilbur and michael grew cl grew closer to one another uh, wilbur grew old as they both grew older sorry grew older and grew closer to one another michael got the job of going to work in the military which wilbur also tagged along um, when they first joined the military, most of the people made fun of Mike for having a dog in the military, but that soon changed as the soldiers started to grow close to Wilbur and Michael. 
which led to them making a lot of friends on the way, which included Miles, who was the one that created all the gear for all of the military. Jordy, who was the goofball out of the group and couldn't go one day without making anybody laugh. And there was the one that Mike was the most closest to, Don, who had a very troubled life where his dad went to prison when he was younger and his mom was uh, very depressed, which was very hard for Don to cheer her up. Hang on, I need to blow my nose. <laughs> sorry for sorry about that guys um where was i do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. hang on uh okay okay no never mind no i mean now i found it later wilbur made a, a bright light in the life of michael which was a girl by the name of samara samara who had everything in common with Michael for years onward, thanks to Wilbur, his his um relationships would make a strong bond with everybody. They overcome all the they overcame all the missions that they were uh, on, which would lead to Michael and Samara becoming boyfriend and girlfriend in the progress, then engaged. Then along with Wilbur, okay, that's gonna get up. Okay. Mike and Sam both moved into a house together, and they were re were retired. But one day, Michael got the call, the most disturbing call that a plane had just collided into one of the twin towers and was asked to go on the job one more time. Which he did. Sam, on the last day, said to Mike that you are the light in my world and will always be in her, uh, in her heart. That's what she said. No pun intended, by the way. Uh, and shared a loving kiss. Now it was the day where Mike packed his bags, went into the back of the Jeep with Wilbur and his friends. Then they were... At, off to the fallen tower and the their jobs um were to get their jobs were to get all the civilians trapped or not trapped off the premises there was this one woman that was trapped under a fallen crane everybody had gotten out safely and then one uh play uh was that piece or uh, in one uh, piece, or at least they thought, and the half of the tower had fallen off, and uh, one of the uh, half of the tower had fallen off, and Don's legs had been crushed by the building, by the building, and was trapped inside all the rubble, and there was no way to get to him. Then suddenly, Wilbur went in uh, deep into the broken pieces of rubble and seemed as if he was going to save Don as he was. Wilbur lifted the rubble w up, which led to Mike and his friends dragging him away. Then another plane was coming, and Mike threw Don out of the way and got crushed by, fall by the falling debris on tv while samara was watching or it seemed and and uh, wilbur had jumped into the way and moved mike out of the way and wilbur had just got crushed i needed to work on that uh i made a whole lot of people get crushed uh but was still breathing and after don was loaded into the tr jeep so was wilbur and then soon as then as soon as you know it they were uh, back at base, they were rushing towards the med bay with Wilbur, and after a few minutes, the doctor had said Don was okay, but would probably have to have his legs amputated. Mike asks, what about Wilbur? Then the doctors, doctor responded with 
a sign that he doesn't have long, uh, with a sigh that he doesn't have long. The doctor asked, uh, um, asked, do you want to see him before he, yes, replied Michael as he went crying to uh, tears into the medical room. He sat next to his bed on his, um, on his um, knees and said this. When I saw you since the day we met, I have loved you and I will always love you. I thank you for being the best dog anyone could can ask for and I also thank you for helping me make so much more good friends and then I probably never would have of never would have and finding the light in my world you not Sam you then as he loved uh, uh, then as he uh, kissed his head neck um, kissed his head next to his bed crying and mourning Wilbur had finally gone to a better place or so Michael had thought after he had, he had left the room in sorrow the doctors moved into the room and realized the flatliners had stopped and Wilbur was on his feet and seemed as if he was better than ever before and ran to, ran to um, Jake uh, ran to Michael and loved all over him. As for Don, he was applied with mechanical legs. He and he thought it was the best thing that had hap ever happened to him. Miles continued to make more um, gear for the military, and so many years to come. Jordy jo was still funny and charismatic as ever, and as for. Our lovebirds and Wilbur, they live happily, they lived happy for so many years to come. The end. So, um, I hope you all have enjoyed my story that I have created today. Um, and if you want to see me create another story, um, be sure to leave a like. And also, um, yeah, I will be, um... I will be seeing you very soon. And I'll see you in the next one, everybody.